Welcome. This is episode. What episode is this? Oh, 327, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're back to the Jericho Squad 77 game. And the the, the group has uh, has just worked their way through the uh, the violence level and making their way down into fraud uh, of the uh, the false hell created by Gregorius in, in Clyde Barker's story, Down Satan. Uh, which has been mysteriously infested by real demons instead of uh, instead of nothing, which is what was there before. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue, after the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. And uh, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, uh, you're on the Santa Monica Pier uh, last night under a compulsion to eat great food and stay uh, to eat great food and stay near your friend, the great Tarval. You gorged yourself on discarded popcorn, corn dogs, turkey legs, hamburgers, French fries, and even an elephant ear until you couldn't eat anymore. So did uh, I just you win? Went... I, I won. <laughs> you, you went on stage. I won the game. And had a mock illusionist uh, duel at, to the delight of the crowds. And uh, and now as the charm spell wears off, you find yourself in a small wire mesh cage. And uh, Torval is near the, the trailer's entrance, uh, letting in a volunteer from the show who won a private magic uh, tutoring session. Uh, so make Wait a perception a check. Yeah, That's what they call it these days. Yeah, make a perception check. Oh. Whoa. 20. Wow. Okay, yeah, with the 20 um you see that the you can see you can't really see him because of where the the trailer entrance is, but you can see his shadow and his shadow has gotten bigger and it looks kind of more beastly. And at that time, the you you hear the uh, the young volunteer. He goes, "Oh God!" And then uh, there's a growling, and then you start to hear the sound of tearing clothes and muscle and skin. Uh, and it's then he time begins, begins to eat. Um, and All after right. about twenty minutes of that, he approaches the cage. Oh, uh, he I has human shape I again. Make it twenty minutes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he has he has human shape again, but there's blood all over him, uh, which vanishes as he as he just swipes his hand across his his outfit and uh, and it's gone. And uh, his his voice is is half human, but it still has sort of a beastly undertone. He he's kind of huffing. I was afraid you had ruptured your stomach. So you've had a taste of the carnival life. How was your first night? Oh, uh, when's dessert? What would you like? Oh, uh, maybe, uh, could you go grab me another elephant ear? I mean, I don't think it's possible for me to rupture my stomach. It's closed now. So I've seen you in battle. You are a great help to the show, charmed or not. I know you have skills, but you could that could be very profitable uh, in our little traveling show. 
the thing is, I need you to convince Mr. Mary and the rest of them. If you can. Can you do that? I can convince the birds from the sky. It seems to me like a pretty good alternative to battling monsters. Or whatever it is you do for these Jericho people. When you're ready, I'll take you back. Let's see how your friends fared without you for a day. And he grabs the cage. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Uh, so you you teleport. Um, he, he 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 casts dimension door, and you teleport out. Okay. So everybody else, as you come down the steps, uh, the smell of death hits your nose. You enter what looks like a similar cathedral to the first level, the one with the gift shop and stuff. But there's no food court, no abandoned gift shop. Uh, there are only piles of gold coins and large a large metal gate in front of you. Across the metal gate, where the smell is presumably coming from, you see dead bodies of two older men. Uh, Jonathan, you're there with Tarval, and the two of you are invisible. He whispers to you, A hearty bunch, your friends. I'm impressed, and this is why I need your help convincing them. Uh, before you, there's a stone room and a gate with two dead bodies hanging from it. Uh, Magera says to everyone, don't touch anything. Someone else is here. And she looks directly at you, Jonathan, and at Tarval. Show yourself, Torabach, and give me and give them their bird back. She looks at everyone. Whoa, whoa, I am my own bird. <laughs> You're from the uh, Tressa from looks the, at is looking at the bodies on the gate on the gate and she gasps. Uh, so if anybody wants to look at those bodies, you can make a uh, make a history check. Well, anybody who's been in Jericho long enough. So I think that uh, Churduvir and and uh, Jonathan wouldn't be able to to know who they are. So you don't have to roll. Okay. Did you say history? History check. Yeah. Okay, Zoe got a 13. 13 total. Okay. Okay. Sorry, 13 total from Uh, Ralph just rolled a 17. Ah, okay. So is 17 the highest one? Sorry, I was 17 plus 2, so 19. Oh, okay. All right, so Ralph... Um, Having uh, seen, having learned some stuff from the history of the Jericho organization, you see what it is that Tressa is looking at, and these two characters are familiar. Uh, one of them is the architect of the uh, of the hell, um, Leopardo, and the other one is Gregorius, the the hell's builder. Oh, okay. Well, I've never met these people. I wonder how they're familiar to me. I don't think I've met these people. No, you haven't met them. You just know them from Jericho's history um, manual. Oh. Well, you you studied is... more than most, or you retained at least that part. <laughs> Obviously not. Well, they're so, familiar. Do any of you know who these bodies are? Well, I think I've read these people in books. Hmm. And what do you know about them? Well, they're from... Uh, Jericho's quiet's history. Mm. Okay. So what do you know about them? Check out their faces, Show to Beard. Uh, I, I've been in the Second Dominion all this time. I don't know many people from the Fifth. Uh, I don't recognize them. Mm. I've seen a lot of bodies in this inferno, and uh, I guess these are just two more for me. Well, people seem to be examining the bodies. Uh, can I try to discreetly unlock the cage? Oh, yeah, I mean, did, so can I open your cage? I open... Uh, well, I'm still in, I assumed I was still in the hands of... Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, he's invisible. Uh, you captor. can't even see him. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha, okay. But can I roll like sleight of beak and then thieves tools? Yeah. As I unwind the wire from on my leg, pop my tag off. But yeah, make a sleight of hand check. 
or sleight of beak? Sleight of beak. <laughs> Seventeen. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're able. It's it's just a basic cage. He didn't put anything special mm-hmm. on it, so you're able to Gosh. unlock it. <laughs> All right, I want to stealthily fly to a a high ledge corner. Okay, uh, make a stealth check. Well, who are you stealthily? Who are you you're trying to do that so that uh, that Torval doesn't see you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Make a stealth check. Fourteen. Not oh, great. Yeah, okay. Am I still yeah, invisible? Uh, or does that like uh, end you if I get are? Away from yeah, me? you're invisible okay. for right now. But uh, you're not doing it at advantage because he's the one who made you invisible. Yeah, I was just seeing if it was an area effect or if I could stay invisible. Yeah, you can. Flied, flew around. I didn't go to grammar school. So uh, Tarval uh, makes himself visible, and now you're visible too. And he says, you people, do you even know that where she's taking you? Why, Why did you make this agreement with her? Where is our friend? He points at uh, Jonathan. Look, he's already escaped. Uh, are you okay, uh, Jonathan Seagull? I've had a pretty rough time. It was horrific. I uh, yeah. don't think I've eaten like that in my entire life, and that's saying something. Uh, I'm glad, I'm glad to see you back. 25 years of gluttony. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you back. So Thor... Thorval? Is that the name? Magara says his real name is Torabach. Torabach. Hmm. So, what do you mean, Torabach? I mean, we went through, uh, you know, we're going through this this uh, place. It you must have, you must we, have made an agreement with her so that she ha- could take you to hell. Yeah, we have. Uh, we're just seeing where it goes. Um, do you know what happens to you when you get there? Do you have it any idea? Hell. I expect it's not going to be pleasant. I I do not know of this hell that you talk of. I'm I'm from the Second Dominion, but uh, I've read about it. I know it's well, a piece of Do you know those evil. those creatures that you fought in the previous uh the previous level, the the uh, the Lemures and the the undead? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Well, you would start out as one of those, and through uh, through countless battle and strife, you'd work your way up and evolve until you're a, a more respectable demon. Well, right now we just want to find the door at the end of this horrible place. So that's where we're going. And uh, Magara says, "You shut up, Toraba. Why are you here?" He says, I'm here to bring my friends to the carnival. Wouldn't you rather join a carnival? It's a, it's a nice life. We, uh, we b- make big crowds. We make good money. We travel the world. Stale popcorn, ugly women. It's not fun. <laughs> I am a scholar. I am not a performer. Oh, but you could be. You never know where life's going to take you, right? I I know exactly what I want to do with my life, and not to be in a greasy pier, uh, entertaining the masses. Thank you. I uh, seek deeper, uh, deeper adventuring and uh, a bigger understanding of what's going on. Well, I think that could get you killed. Well, I knew this. There were dangers to this when I joined this group of. Of adventurers, so I am prepared to take those risks. He, uh, um, Torval looks at you, Jonathan, and he says, "Jonathan, you agreed. You are going to tell my friend, your friends here, what a what a great place you just left. Tell them, uh, tell them what we did, how what how what what it was like." Well, it's a lot like here, you know, I uh, ate too much, disgusting food, you killed someone and ate them, I cleaned up afterwards, it's really, it was kind of the same. Yeah, we all, we all got to eat, right? Well, wait, what? He, he killed someone and you helped him clean it up? 
Well, I mean, as I do. Huh. Uh, he was pretty good at cleaning himself up. You surprised but, you me. You know, it's it's not like it's not like the rest of us haven't done it. It was pretty much like hanging out with you guys. See? Okay. Well, that place only there's a lot no of bad danger. Habits fast. What do you the mean difference there's no is that People there's no, die. if you come with me, there's no danger. You don't battle all these monsters and whatnot. What do you mean? Does anyone there's else no find? Does anyone else find it unusual that we're almost to the bottom? We're finally almost to the ninth level, and all of a sudden, this guy wants us to go with him. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just preventing us from reaching uh, the source of this. Well, as no, I, I want to go with you. With him, well, as I, I want to him, come with you. Uh, the way to to learn my magic is a bap is an infernal baptism. So I want you. I want those of you who are willing to to take it on. I want to take you there, uh, bring you in the in the gate, and then take you back out again. And so at this point, Megara says that was not our agreement. She says you need to leave Toraba. It would be a shame if one of your friends were to stab you with a holy weapon. He gets really mad now. Uh, he changes his shape, and he looks like a human with a tiger's head, and his um, his hands are backwards, right? He's got um, his palms are on the uh, outsides of his hands. Ooh. Um, and he he's looking like he's about ready to lunge at Megara. Jonathan, do you trust this guy? I mean, he says there would be no danger, but he you also said that he killed someone at the carnival. I mean, how is that not dangerous? And nobody said anything about going through the portal into hell. You know, I just want to find the source of the portal. That's all I want to do. I mean, frankly, he has not lied to me yet. Magera says, I told you agreed to come with me to into hell. So I told you that. Mm. I was going to say, McGarrett hasn't lied to us yet either. It's true. So, right we now, could the only. We be telling the truth, and we could just be screwed. Well, right now, that the only. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe nobody's lying, and we should leave. Well, we like should... I said, we're on level eight of nine. I don't like leaving tasks incomplete. Mm hmm. I agree. I th I think, Torabach, you need to back off. If you want to come with us, that's fine, but I don't want any trouble right now, and I I am ready to to move forward through this level. I don't know what sort of deal you have with the Magira. Honestly, I'm starting to distrust both of you at this moment. Well, if some, just as an aside to everybody, if somebody needs to be stabbed with a holy weapon, I have my dagger of Aset, and I'm feeling kind of stabby after, you know, those two just kind of like <laughs> hung me out to dry last time. So uh, just, you know, point me in a direction. He, he uh, when he hears this, he looks at McGarrett and he says, this is your fault. And uh, he says, how could you betray me like this? And uh, and she she kind of shrugs her shoulders. It seems like they're about to fight or something. I don't. Um, I'm gonna go start rifling through pockets while they're talking. Yeah, they and... obviously have a lot of history between them, and this is taking forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So hear me out. You said that you thought you recognized those two bodies, and this is level eight. So whoever they were, they were able to go through all the other levels to reach here and they they're just guys in suits so who well, not necessarily i think these guys are the ones that designed this huh really well maybe they have something on their person that would be useful to us let's go oh. check it out you know i move towards the bodies and and uh and jonathan livingston and say well what are you finding and then before before he gets there, I would like to uh, use my subtle spell, spell meta magic to cast detect thoughts and just kind of see if I can pick up their surface thoughts talking to each other. And then I'll say to Cho Devere, I don't know, what am I finding as I rifle through so the wait, pockets? Wait, whose, whose thoughts are you detecting? Um, it's 
technically everybody's for thir surface thoughts. Uh, you initially learn the surface thoughts of, oh no, I gotta switch it to one creature at a time. Um, I will try Torah. Torah Bach. Torah Bach. Okay, so he's he is right now, um, actually, you don't get anything from him. Okay, and then I'll just kind of shift it. Uh, and M Magera is thinking, is wondering how many arrows she can put in him before he gets to her. That wasn't helpful. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, overall thinking. Willem is hungry. <laughs> and, uh... A oh, man. Yeah. And, uh... The, um... The, the two bodies hanging on the gates are both thinking... Take the gold. Just take Whoa. it. So th the bodies are thinking? Well, yeah. you don't know that. So okay. are they not dead or are they still thinking post dead? They're 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 post both thinking dead. just just take the gold. And uh and uh, what are the rest of you guys? What are your sur surface thoughts? Is the range of thirty feet? Yeah. Oh, thirty feet from from where um, Jonathan is right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's just Tressa and me, right? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'm okay. But I voiced my opinion already. <laughs> Tressa's Tressa's uh, wondering which one she should attack. Hmm. Uh, what Musette? What is Musette thinking? I'm annoyed. Let's hurry this up. <laughs> okay. So I guess in light of detect detecting thoughts within the corpses, I'm gonna like give one a solid peck in the eye and see if it reacts. It uh, shakes its head and looks ah, up at you. It's alive! <laughs> it's right, alive! I'll do this, I've walked the over. Startled him. seagull flutter off. I I back off like six feet. <laughs> oh man, Magara says, "Please, I put them there." <laughs> you put them there, so who oh, are yeah. they? They built they're this the, place. They're the biggest frauds, as far as hell's concerned. There are they're the biggest frauds ever. Oh, is this the fraud level? According to them, it is. Okay, so. Are they dangerous? Should I try to open the gate, Magara? Keys are in their brains. Mm. And what are her surface, surface thoughts as she's talking to Joe Devere? She's still uh, she's still looking at uh, Torabah. Okay. She's she's um, she, she's most of her concentration is on him. Uh, she doesn't really know who's going to win in a fight between her and him. It's pretty evenly matched, and she's nervous about it. Nagara, if they created this place, why are they named frauds? If you'd been to hell, you would know. This is not even close. I believe that. Not only no that, not but they, they used they used hell to to try to get closer to God, they use this, this false, phony, terrible hell. This isn't really hell. It, this is a blasphemy. No, this isn't really hell. We're not this even. Is, we're not there yet. This is a blasphemy to hell. It is. This is an insult. So, okay. the keys uh, are in their brains. Um, yeah, I was going to ask the same thing and definitely monitor this response. Okay. I, I inspect the door. Okay. Well, and bef before you do that, uh, Tarval or Toraba says, you cannot make me leave. And she says, just get out. And she pulls her bow out and points it at him. And he says, they're coming with me. I don't care what agreement they made with you. 
You know that she can't leave. She can't go back to hell alone. She has to take someone. She says, yes, yes. Why don't you just take those two? And she points at Tressa and uh, and at uh, Zoe. Just take those two and go. He says, that's not who I came for. And he lunges at her. And everybody roll initiative. Okay, roll initiative. He's a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. I, I got a three plus six equal nine. Okay. Oh, wait. Got 13. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 that wasn't it. I've, I rolled it. I got an 18. Ralph rolled a 14. Good oh, today. there we go. 16 plus 3, 19. I rolled intelligence instead of initiative. I rolled a natural one. Oh. And wow. I have a whole plus four. So five. So five? Oh, no. Five total. Yes. Okay. And, and what, Jonathan, what did you get? An 18. Okay. What is that square in the center of the thing? Is it a carpet or a column? Uh, that that is something you can stand on. I think it's just a, a rug. Okay, okay. Is there a rug? <laughs> What's underneath the rug? Ugh. Ah. Why it's not so bad? It's uh, on. If you if you took any time to look at it, it looks nice, but it's really just super cheap. <laughs> An IKEA rug. The budget in hell is not very grand. Yeah. This is fake hell. Oh. Fake hell. That makes all the difference. Yeah, and this is the fraud fraud level, so the huh. rug is fake. When you so were... everything's out of false materials. <laughs> yeah. So what is? It's, it's what is just this like that stuff? mean? If you can't. The, the yellow uh, stuff are gold. are piles of gold coins. Okay. So the gold is probably fake too. Has anyone checked it? No. Um, I don't know there if was anyone someone... has talents. As well, a someone in the 1800s. Someone <laughs> heard something the dead were thinking, right? I mean, I can't say that. But... It's not oh, my Tressa turn. Got it too. Oh, Tressa got it too. Yeah. I'm still at the bottom, she, aren't I? She rolled a natural one. I think I'm going to stay off the rug. Because <laughs> I don't know if there might be something underneath it. Piles of gold. Hmm. Mm. All right. So, um... We're in combat now. You guys don't have to uh, participate if you don't want, but I have to do this in the turns that you know that people have. Okay. So uh, if you want, if you want to sit back, you can. Um, but uh, first of all, is the uh, is uh, Gregorius's turn, and he wiggles and he's he just if how long does it, can you detect people's thoughts? One minute, uh, Jonathan. One minute. Okay, so he's just thinking, just take the gold. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, then it's Ch Chertovir's turn. It's not my turn. <laughs> um, I I distrust these two, uh, Magira uh, and Torabach. So I'm going to cast Tiny Hut and tell everybody, hey, <laughs> you guys, let What's them the casting time on Tiny Hut? Okay, the casting time, let's see. I'll just wait this out. At uh, casting time, one minute. Range area. Yeah, that's that's ten, ten rounds of combat. Oh dang! Okay. Yeah. All right. So I can't do that, huh? Ten rounds of combat. Well, you could, right. but you would have you would uh, you'd be busy for ten rounds trying to oh, okay. make that. Okay. All right. So instead of and that, I just pull out my sword and I watch and I say to the rest of the Jericho squad, "What do you say, guys? Let them fight." Let mm -hmm. God sort them out. Let Habexamendio sort them out. Yeah, so, I don't are want to. Are you, no, hold, are, are no you holding an action? Or are you? Um, are you gonna? No, I just I just pulled my sword out and I just said that. Okay. Is that okay? okay? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Torabach. 
Um, he is going to... What's he going to do? Just in case we have to fight Megara at some point, at least by then she'll have some damage. Uh, he's going to dominate Tressa. Ah, oh, shucks. This could get ugly, guys. I think I'm standing too close to the action. Should probably back <laughs> off. <laughs> You're always at the uh, wrong Ralph. place at the right uh, yeah. time. <laughs> well, I just want to look at the gold. <laughs> did, oh, did you look at the gold? Well, I didn't get to. We went into battle. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, she she passed. So Tressa started to feel like she her body was being taken over, but she shook it off. Uh, she's okay. Jonathan. All right, I'll fly down here, hop down, pick up one of these pieces of gold, and put it in his hand. Hopping down to here, ping for me. Picking up a piece of gold and placing it in his hand. Blue suit. Okay. Um, so when you when you pick up a piece of gold, it disintegrates, uh, and all of the piles of gold just sort of disintegrate into dust. Oh. And you see, and you see a couple of um, the the spikes that are holding them onto the gate retract back into the gate, and uh, these guys come down. Uh, they're free to move around. All right, so now yeah, I'll fly I back know. up to the but, other corner. Yeah. So For the rest uh, of my movement, and I am done. Okay. And the um, Magera. Is going to. She pulls out her long swords and attacks Torabar. Hope I didn't just make zombies. I have a <laughs> feeling I just made zombies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, but how many rounds? Is the text thoughts over? Or are there a couple rounds left? Um. Oh yeah. I mean, part of it was out of combat. Yeah, so yeah. I'd say yeah. I'd say you have uh, probably two rounds left. Yeah. Okay. That seems about right. I would say two or none. Okay, so she just hits him with one attack, the other two miss. That's, he takes nine damage. She does a kind of a slash across his front and she yells, help me. And uh, Willem attacks also. Do, 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 yeah. do. <laughs> oh yeah, Brand. I guess I didn't. He got a critical hit, but I guess I didn't really describe them to you because everybody else has been with them for the whole last game. I so Magera is a big armored. Um, she's she's a, a an armored uh, female with uh, with large bat wings, mm -hmm. and uh, Willem is a giant spider. He, All right. So, and Willem just got a critical hit. Good boy. Yeah, so he bites right into what should be his neck, uh, but nothing happens. He doesn't get hurt. Holy spider. Yeah, and now it's uh, uh, Ralph's turn. I'm just gonna hide here then. <laughs> okay, so. Get out of the way. <laughs> Okay, make a yeah, make a stealth check for hiding. That's twenty sided. Yeah, you add your stealth ability. So, yeah, so every roll that doesn't say what it is is a twenty sided die. Fourteen. Okay, uh, yeah, you feel like you're not. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff to hide at hide behind where you're at but yeah i'm just gonna get feel like they're that. not paying attention to you right now yeah okay um right zoe is next okay i'm gonna cast aid just basically so nobody freaks out and they stay they stand strong so let's see
Okay, so that's one action, casting time. And I take one spell shot. What What does aid do? Uh, your spell bolsters your allies with toughness and resolve. Choose up to three creatures within range. Uh, my range is 30 feet, which basically is pretty much everywhere around me. Uh, each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increase by five for the duration. Okay, you could pick anybody, any of your allies except for Jonathan, he's too far away. Well, who needs to fight right now? Let me see. Who's who's the next turn? One of the uh, creatures on the gate is going to be yeah. next, and then Musette. Let me give it to Musette. Well, you, and you can pick three people, right? Yeah. Well, let, let me just do the three around me then. Okay, so just, Tressa, just... Uh, Ralph, and Musette. Yeah. Okay, is that for me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I uh, and Tressa and uh, Ralph. So are you going to move or, or do anything with your bonus action, or is that it for uh, for Zoe? I think that's it for now. I'm just going to kind of okay. see where this is going. Make sure people's uh, points stay up. So this guy is going to run over. Is, is he uh, He's down off of the gate, and he's going over here, and he's going to attack uh, Chirgovir. Uh, Leopardo, the architect. It's almost like I'm psychic. <laughs> <laughs> He does a slam attack. 13. Does 13 hit? Um, On me? Yeah. I think I still have the mage armor uh, on. Yeah, you, you said... do. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I have... Okay, so I have 13 armor class plus 3. That's 16. Okay. Yeah, so he missed. All right. Uh, he can do it again, though. Okay. Does he have an advantage or something, or...? No, he gets two attacks per round. Oh. So that one hit. Pesky Leopardo. How many hit points? Yeah. He, uh, he He's not exactly a zombie. He looks more like he's been taken apart and then stitched back together. Now that he's up in your face. So maybe the key is actually in his brain. <laughs> so you take 17 bludgeoning damage as he kind of clubs down on you really hard. 17? Yeah. Oh, this is not going to be a good day. 17. You bust the move. Next round. <laughs> uh, so 17 damage. I'm down to 7 points. Okay. Uh, Musette's turn. Jesus. Okay, so let's see. Despite all of my saying that I wasn't going to be fighting, I guess now I do have to. So thank you, Zoe. Uh, so I better scooch, and then I'm going to shoot Leopardo. Okay, 14. Uh, that hits. Yeah, go ahead and roll your damage. Okay, let's see, I said shoot. Uh, what is that? 2d6. Plus and this three. is your, your uh, gun, right? Yeah, pistol. Uh, okay. okay, so at 3 plus 2, it's 5, plus 3 is 8. Eight damage? Yep. Okay. All right. What? So you what you uh, you shoot him and you take a big chunk out of his uh, his his shoulder area there, but uh, he's he's still coming. Have you guys considered and, uh, the long term hearing damage from shooting all these guns inside? <laughs> <laughs> You, you don't know it because it's not long term yet. <laughs> you consider okay, the damage so, of getting bitten, bludgeoned seventeen points by a zombie. Yeah, that's uh, Tressa long -term yells uh, yells to everyone. She says, "Our bullets are blessed." But she pulls out her pistol. Uh, she's gonna attack Toraba with her gun. Okay, and uh, I think that hits. Need more dice. That is the last thing I want to hear the BM say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she she shoots him, and what looks the the wound looks it's actually bigger than what you would expect from from her gun. I mean, it it blows a big wide hole in him, and Toraba screams, Gregorius. And then, how tall are the ceilings? Oh, the ceiling in here is about ten feet up. He is going after Jonathan. 
So I did say I was on a ledge. Does that provide any cover? I kind of like duck back. Well, the the only ledge right there really is the gate. Yeah, I guess you could be up on the gate. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna do a dodge as he's attacking. Okay. Because I'll just die if he gets me. <laughs> 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 All right, he's going to uh, swipe at you with his claws two times. Whoa. So the first one, he rolled really badly. Oh, okay. thank God. So he got a 10 on the first one. That misses. And a natural one on the second one. Oh, thank God. So let's see <laughs> what he does to himself. <laughs> It says he hits an unintended random target that's in range, but his reach is only five feet, so there's nobody else in range besides himself. Uh, he hits himself clawing. in his confusion. Yeah, he just he punches <laughs> the gate and uh, and he takes some damage. He takes four damage. That's okay. right. That's that's how I kill him. You just get him <laughs> yeah. kill themselves. <laughs> why are, why are Actually, you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Looking back on the campaign, that yeah, is kind of how it's gone. <laughs> he sends a mage hand to slap the zombie around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Chertovir's turn. Okay, so I am going. I only have one spell slot left, and I'm I'm down bad. Um, let me cast. I need to get rid of this guy. I'm going to cast magic missile at okay. Leopardo. Okay. Uh, me, that uh, automatically hits, so just roll your damage. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, magic missile damage is 1d4 plus 1. Hang on. For each missile, and you have three of them. Three of them. Okay. Let me. Yeah, and on. you can pick multiple targets, or you can make them all hit the same same target. A little pyramid die right here. A little magic die. Yep. Okay. Rolling first one. Okay. Four. Rolling the second one. Another four. Okay. Is that? All, did you already add in the plus one? Oh no! So it's five plus five. Okay. Let me roll the third one again because I had another four. There's something wrong with this. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> Three. It, it only has four choices. So yeah. So five, five, have... and four. So that's fourteen points on Leopard. All right. Fourteen. And I'm out of out of magic, them. people. Leot Leopardo the architect. I have to recharge my battery spell. Spell battery. Can you still bust the move? I can, yeah. <laughs> I'm for the second dominion, man. Oh, I meant your blade blade song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, that's true. I, blade song. Three times per long rest. You could use a oh. bonus action to start a blade song which lasts for one minute and grants you the following benefits. You gain a plus three bonus to your AC, your walking speed increases by 10 feet, you have advantage on acrobatic checks, and you gain a plus three bonus to any CON saving throw. Is that uh, constitution, constitution saving throw? Yeah. You make to maintain your concentration on a spell. It ends early if you're incapacitated, if you've done medium or heavy armor or shield, or if you use two hands to make an attack with a weapon. So I think I'm still good to use blade song. And it does say I can use a bonus action to start the Blade Song. Yeah, go for it. Um, so I guess that that then it's done, and that doesn't use a spell slot or anything, right? That's just an ability. No. Yeah, that's just an ability three times okay. per long rest. Okay. I think I yeah, use it once. Now is a good time. Okay, I start the Blade Song. All right, and the uh, Torabach is attacking Magera. He thought about attacking Tressa, but decided that uh, she was the bigger threat, and he didn't want to turn his back on her. That one was a miss, and yeah, he missed twice. Okay, Jonathan. Jonathan's doing what Jonathan does best. I am going to cast Invisibility. And okay. fly over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so he gets an attack of opportunity with disadvantage because you're invisible. Is uh, 17 hit? Yes. Okay. He takes uh, seven clawing damage as he kind of swipes at you. 
Uh, and uh, Gregorius doesn't look like he's all sewn together the same way that Leopardo does. Um, he's kind of more pale and gaunt. Oh, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> right, so far, you're fine. <laughs> okay, and uh, the Fury Magera is going to attack, make three longsword attacks against uh, against Toraba. Well, hold on, I gotta make a Constitution saving throw um, for concentration. Oh, on your uh, invisibility. Mm-hmm. Okay. Twenty-one. But I think good. he has one miss, one critical hit, and another hit. So that's pretty good. Oh no, that's they're all hits. Okay. Twenty-six damage for the first one. He's looking kind of messed up. Uh, and the giant spider knows that he can't fight him now. He is uh, going to spin a web cocoon on him or something? Yeah, actually, that's exactly what, what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, for reference, concentration's 10 or half the damage, whichever is oh. higher. So that's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, but he he uh, he got a natural one, so he totally missed, and he probably did something bad. Let's see. <laughs> oh, uh, he hits an unintended target. What's the range on that? Thirty feet. Wow, that's anybody, right? Except for Gregorius. No, I think he's also in thirty feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are ten ten people here that he could hit with that. Oh, he hit Gregorius with the web. Oh, as an action. So on his turn, he's going to have to try to get out of that. All right, Gregorius just got webbed, and now it's Ralph's turn. So, Ralph, Hello. those two are fighting in front of you, and you just saw Magera just slash the crap out of uh, out of uh, Torval. You knew <laughs> him as to Torval. Yeah, uh, he's he's looking really, really hurt. And uh, and Willem tried to web him and ended up webbing Gregorius instead. And you also see uh, right in uh, in front of you by a few feet, uh, Leopardo is uh, he just bashed the crap out of uh, out of Cherdovir, who was hurt to begin with. So mm -hmm. he's uh, he's in a bad shape. Oof. well, Cherdovir means more to me than uh this other guy so i'm gonna go ahead and how far is leopardo from me 30 feet uh 20 i think he's 20 feet or 20 wait 30 feet 30 feet and let me just double check this real quick this has a range oh eldridge blast ah. oh okay 120 yeah, yeah. feet is the range on that okay and you're you've got you've got um You've got Chertovir in in between the two of you, so yeah. I, I mean you can do it. But if you get a critical failure, you have a pretty good chance of hitting him. Don't rebuke me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, which Chertovir at? He's only at seven hit points now, right? Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, you you can move too. You can you can uh, step around, you know, so that you you've got a better shot. Well. And and uh, you don't have to go like you can go diagonal counts as a you know. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Then now I'm gonna hit Leopardo. All right, roll roll to hit. Okay, four plus three, so seven. All right. Okay, you uh, you shoot him in the side and put a big scorch on his side, and he kind of looks down at it, and he looks up at you. And it's Zoe's turn. Thanks, Ralph. Yeah. Okay, first one I want to do. Let me get down here. Is okay. What were? You, what did you say your hit points were right now, Ralph? Mine. Yeah. Did... Mine. Mine are at eleven right now. Do you need to fill up? Well, right Shodavir is less than me right now. I got seven. Okay. Well, then let me do that then. Okay. Let me do. Oh, my mouse is not working. 
very well tonight. Uh, right. Now, healing word says one bonus action, so I have to do something else first. Is that correct? Oh, no, you can do them in the, in any order. So you can do that first before your action, if you want. Um, because honestly, I can move over a couple of spaces and do mass healing word, which oh, also yeah. range of sixty feet, and I can do our entire team and give them awesome hit points. Let me do that. Screen for or something. Alright. Um, okay, so everybody's within range for me. I'll go ahead and cast that. Any and... yeah, anybody within sixty feet that's your friend. Yeah. Is there anyone that you want to exclude? Because it's kind of <laughs> tricky knowing like who your friends are right now. Um uh, only the Jericho squad for right now. Okay. Anyway. All right. Sounds good. All right. Am I? Uh... So you roll uh, 1d4 uh, plus your spellcast. So, so I got a 12. So I got a 12. What? I got 12. Mass healing word. 3 plus 9 is 12. The 1d4 plus 9. Plus, it's plus 9? That's what wow. it says. 1d4 okay. plus 9. Okay. Oh, that's great. Okay, so everybody get everybody gets twelve hit points back. Woohoo! That wants it or needs it. So you can I'm put twelve in your healing section on your hit points there. Tress is back up to full. Did you say nine plus uh, four? Three plus uh, three plus six or no? Wait. It was it was one d four plus nine. Yeah. And how much? I rolled a three, and then you add nine, so that's twelve. Twelve. So I can heal twelve points. Yes. Okay. Healing twelve points down up to fourteen. That was a big help. Oh, you still um, you still have a full action. That was just a bonus action. Yeah. Okay. So, so who's about to get attacked on our team next? <laughs> oh, um. Zoe, it looks like you have 13 hit points, so you probably should have, have heal yourself, too. Oh, did, does it do me, too? I thought it was just the team. Yeah, yeah it's anyone you can see. Yeah, so it, it heals you, too. Okay. I've already moved, but I didn't move all, like, six spaces. I only moved, like, three. Yeah, so you've got the remainder of that of your movement, and you have your full action if you want to do something else that takes an action. And everybody's standing in front of me. <laughs> Um, you can shoot around your friends. I mean, if you're like using a gun or something, or doing a spell, you can just lean around them. Okay. And you can and you can move through your friends. You just can't move through enemies. Okay. Now well, let's do this. I wanted to do, yeah. I'm gonna do guiding bolt. All right. So if I only move three, I can move two more squares. And I want to do Leopardo. Okay. So All right. Yeah. Roll the hit for your down. guiding bolt. All right. So. Hit. Brand, is... I think that, that was a healing domain thing. I think that maybe that's why. Okay, yeah. I, I'm not doubting if it's on D20. I mean, yeah. I'm not doubting that. Okay. The it's, guiding yeah, no, bolt. It, oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Okay. The hit for a guiding bolt. I got a. A total of 27. <laughs> yeah, that totally hits. Definitely. His armor class is nine. And He's my pretty damage, slow. And my damage is 31. Wow. Okay. You took a big chunk out of him. And uh, he's glowing now. So the next person that tries to attack him has advantage. And it's his turn. And he didn't like that. So he's going to, he kind of turns and faces Zoe and he's going to attack Zoe with his slam attack. Oh yeah, that hits 21 to hit. 19, uh, 19 bludgeoning damage. He just takes his two fists together and wham, hits Zoe with his fists. 19 damage. Are you still uh, up? 
I have six. All right. So y'all take care of me now. I <laughs> took care of you. <laughs> it's Musette's turn. Okay, uh, anyway, I'm trying to save spell slots. Um, and yes, Zoe, I will take care of you in just a minute, but I want to, let's try to hurry up and uh, get rid of Leopardo immediately. So I'm just going to shoot him. Okay. Uh, roll the hit. I got a 10. You can roll twice. Oh, shoot, you're right. You just said, because... Yeah. Oh, so you oh, oh, no. 10, 10 was still hit, but... 10 yeah. was better than <laughs> what I rolled next. Might roll 20. Yeah, yeah. Roll if you roll again, you may you might get a critical hit. You never know. No, I got a four. I rolled again. And oh, I got okay. a four. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So ten, ten hits. Ten hits. Uh, okay. What's so your damage? Two d six plus three. And uh, Tress is going to be up next. Seven's the damage. Okay. All right. And uh, and uh, oh, real fast. Uh, I was looking at yeah. my bonus actions. It says I have a I have a, a healing word on the first. Yeah. So I guess I can go ahead and cast that for um, for Zoe before we get out of here. Okay. First level. Uh, here we go. So she gets back a one d four plus three. Okay. So yeah, roll the d four. Four. Uh, three plus three. She gets back six. All right. Did you hear that, Zoe? Excellent. And. Uh, Tressa sees that her friends are kind of in trouble, and as much as she wants to keep shooting those two, um, she's going to try to help out her friends. She's going to attack with her glaive. 21 to hit, that totally hits, and then she's going to add Wrathful Smite onto that for extra damage. I like the mixed era image of like, she's kind of glaive in one hand and a pistol in the other. <laughs> yeah. Like shoots the one guy, that puts <laughs> the pistol away, and like a knight in full armor with a side holster, I don't know. <laughs> like he does 14 thing. damage. He is just hanging on by a thread right now. And now it's Gregorius's turn, and he's going to use his turn to try to get out of the web. I like Willem better and better. Yeah, yeah he, he didn't get out of the web. He tried. He's struggling in it, but he's stuck. Okay. Uh, Churduvir is next. Okay. So I got my sword out and I started Blade Song. I am going to attack Leopardo. Okay. Um, uh, roll to hit. Alrighty. So roll to hit with my sword. And um, so Blade Song's already like active when I attack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. DC. Yeah, for I ten rolled. for one minute, that's like ten rounds. And we're, we're just on round three. I launched. Uh, I got a Urethamex Silken Sword to hit one plus eight equals nine. Yeah, that still hits. His, his oh. armor class is really low. His armor awesome. class is nine. Did you roll the one though? He did it on D and D Beyond. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then it says damage is one D four plus four. Yes. So, Plus four. I have to grab some coffee. Six damage. So he's uh, he's hurt even more. He, he's but he's still standing there looking at you. That's okay. Crazy. And now it is um, for a boss turn. So Rob and Brant, I might need some help on how to resolve this, but he's going to <laughs> run over and grab onto uh, Ralph and try to plane shift out. Yeah. So first thing is Megara gets an attack of opportunity against him. <laughs> she missed him. I don't want to do a okay. reaction. Yeah. Wait, well, also, I, 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 ha he, I have um, my cloak on. Uh, Ooh, yeah, that's going to make it. So, so I'm going <laughs> to say that this is like a, a claw attack roll, and it's with disadvantage because of your cloak, right? Yeah. Wow. 17 and a 19. Uh, my armor class is fifteen. Yeah. So, and that's plus seven. So he got a he got a um, twenty four to hit. So he grabs onto you. Uh, Wait. And he's gonna plane shift out, but you do have a reaction. Um, what do you, what do you want to do for the reaction? My reaction is hellish rebuke. 
I think you have to take damage for Hellish Did I, take da- did I not just take damage? No, he oh, just I grabbed hate- onto your arm so that he can, t- so that he can uh, take you out of there. Okay. I mean, you did ask for my help, Ryan. Um, yeah. Rules-wise, Plane Shift only works for willing creatures. Oh. You up to eight willing creatures who link hands in a circle are transported. So it's Kumbaya. Huh. Gate might work. I don't know. Can he do gate? <laughs> Not no, to help he's, you. <laughs> he, he's just doing plane shift. Yeah, plane shift. So really okay. So us. yeah, he's um he's he's trying to persuade you to cut. He says, "Let's let's not get killed. Come on, Ralph. Let's go." And he reaches <laughs> his hand out to you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know. That's pretty tempting when you put it like that. <laughs> uh, sure. You'll die co- if you stay. I can't cause. It's not my turn. I can't do that. <laughs> no, I don't want to go do- with this asshole. Yeah, you can just you can just say no. I mean, and he's he'll just plane shift out by himself. No, get lost. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, he's uh, he's gone. He's plane shifting out. Howard, as he plane shifts out. <laughs> he was hurt really badly. Yeah. Magara messed him up, and uh, Tressa shot him in the back too. It's hard to okay. be a demon. Okay. Uh, and now it's Jonathan's turn. Uh, I'm going to, still invisible, fly behind Leopardo and uh, use my action to distract him. Okay. To give the next. Yeah, his how, next how, attack. How are you going to. What, what do you do to distract him? Just kind of fly close to him so he can feel the wing beats and call loudly, but not touch okay. him. Okay. And try so not that to gives make advantage attack. to the next people that are attacking him? What well, gives. Hit, disadvantage to his next attack. Oh, okay. And now it's Megara's turn. So I'm trying to do it in a way that I don't lose invisibility. She's going to go up here. It's a good thing that Tressa never attacked her. She almost did. Uh, but now Megara is going to... Um, actually, she'll go in here and attack him. Three times with her long swords. Yeah, all of those hit. Leopardo finally dead. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he died. <laughs> and she and she yells, "Dig the key out of his brain!" Oh yeah, and Gregorius is not dead <laughs> yet, right? Yeah, that's right. And it is Willem's turn. And Willem is going to run down here. Whoa. That was weird. And attack Gregorius through the web. Uh, So I think he missed. Okay, it's Ralph's turn. So we got to get this key out of Leopardo's head. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, I got a sickle. You just stab him in the head. Yeah, and just start yeah, following yeah, it out like um, a jack o' lantern. Yeah. Um. You. You don't have to make an attack roll. You just. Just roll the. Uh. Make a dexterity check. I guess. Uh. Sixteen. Okay. Uh. Yeah. With a with a sixteen, you're able to kind of dig in there without. Uh, without making too much of a mess or making it uh, difficult for yourself. So you, you do you do see a key down in there. It was literally in their brains. Yeah. It's got mush all over it. Yeah. Do, do you grab the key? Yeah, I, I'll grab the key. Jonathan, do you want to pick this off? Okay. W- w- when you touch the key, you <laughs> take four points of damage. It burns ah. your hand. And Ow. You, you, uh, makes you drop it. Okay, Jonathan, do not eat the key. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't That's have to say this to you, there. but... Okay. And now it's Zoe's turn. You probably need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to use the Sacred Flame Cantrip <laughs> against our little buddy Gregorius there. Oh, okay. You're going to light the web on fire? Cook yeah, it, it would it would burn up the web. Oh man! Well, no, but doesn't it damage him more too? Yeah, it. 
because oh, those are the, flammable. Yes. It's flame like radiance, it's not necessarily actual flame. Oh. No, a flame would be good. Well. Hmm. Do it. No, just do it. You sure? Yeah, there's no reason not he's to. He's going to have to succeed on a dexterity throw, and, well, he's tied up, so I don't think he will. <laughs> yeah. And if the web burns, it does an extra 2d4 fire damage. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do the sacred flame. All right. All right. Is that a saving throw, or does that have a does that have a, an attack roll? I think it's a saving throw. It says one action. And it's no, but, up. but for Gregorius, I don't to dodge it. I think he has to make a dexterity saving throw, and he can't because he's restrained. Right, exactly. That's another reason why I want to do it because he can't. Yeah, so you you just automatically hit him. So yeah, go ahead and roll the damage and the extra fire damage. Okay, <clears throat> so. What did we say? The damage say, is Rob, seven. The damage yeah. is seven. Seven from the sacred flame. Two d four. And then two d four fire damage also. Okay. So okay. Five. five more damage. All right. <laughs> and next and is Musen's turn. <laughs> he hasn't had very good luck. Well, he is a fraud. Uh, I just want to shoot Gregorius. He's still not dead. Oh, come on. Six. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, you just. So you do six damage? Or was that uh, to hit? That was to hit. Um, oh, wait. I'm going to say. Plus five. I got an 11. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say you get advantage because he was just now um, wrestling with the web and uh, he, he, it's it's burned, burning up on him. But I don't I, I don't think since you're right next, I don't think that he's completely out of it yet. So you get advantage to hit him. OK, well, I will be back with the same. <laughs> All right, so it's 11. It's 11. <laughs> OK, yeah, that, that missed. Oh, that's funny. And uh, Tressa is next. She's gonna go this way under, uh, under the, the actually the, she doesn't even, can't even see the bird because he's invisible, right? Mm-hmm. Now I'm highlighting the bird instead. There. Sorry. I'll move out of your way. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and she goes over here, and she's gonna take a swing at uh, at uh, Gregorius. And that hits. And she's gonna do another wrathful smite. 15 damage to him. And now it's the vampire spawn, Gregorius' turn. I shouldn't have said that first part out loud. I don't think it'll <laughs> last long enough for it to matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got, wow. So he's got a spider over here, and he's got Tressa that just stabbed him over there. He's going to grab at Tressa and then try to bite her. Uh, that missed. And then the bite hits another eight damage, and she's feeling a little sick from the bite. Here to be and Jonathan will be after that. Okay. So, Gregorius is still alive and kicking? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move my character close to him. And, let's see. Can I step on this square next to the spider? Yeah. So I'm going to uh, attack him with my sword, with my uh, Erethemic Silken Sword. And it's, okay, uh, uh, roll to hit. <clears throat> okay, I got a nine. That misses. Oh, all right. Okay, Jonathan. All right, I'm going to use Mage Hand to pick the key up and fit it into the lock. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that works. <clears throat> you see that it, uh, there, there's, there's one lock directly under where the body was hanging on the gate. Mm-hmm. And you, you put it in there and turn, and you hear one bolt sliding back. 
<laughs> but the gate doesn't open. Mm hmm. All right, I guess I'll just wait till next round until they chop his head off. And I'm pretty sure I'm no longer invisible using Mage Hand. Right, right. Because you scoot cast back a little spell. bit. I'll scoot back a little bit, and <laughs> I'm done. And it's Megara's turn. She's going to go through this mess and over here and do three attacks on Gregorius. If you get one miss and two hits, a one damage she does with her slashing swords. And he's looking pretty beat up at this point. <clears throat> and Willem is going to try to bite him. Oh, Willem. You got a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, okay. That's not a good sidekick. That's me. I'm the one rolling the dice. You mistakenly strike an ally adjacent to you with your attack. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So that would either be Musette or... Uh, sure to and it's, it's Musette. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In his excitement to bite Gregorius, he accidentally bit Musette instead. <laughs> Got a little turned around. I trusted um, you, Willow. That yeah. spider. Kind of whack. That Whoa, he got a natural one again on his attack against Musette. <laughs> just, just give up, man. Need <laughs> 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 a new paradigm. So let's see what happens with that. Your target may re-roll all ones and twos on the damage roll for his next successful melee attack versus you. So if you if you decide if you that if you decide to attack him, you can do more damage. If you decide to attack Willem. That was weird. Alright. Uh Ralph. I don't want to. Yeah, I know. Or wait. <laughs> Actually, because he kind of made himself vulnerable. Yeah. But Willem's like our ally. Well, he's our ally right now. But remember, <laughs> the next level is tre treachery and betrayal, and there's a reason Judas ended up there. I follow. I've been following. It's your call. <laughs> oh, is it my turn? It's uh, Ralph's turn. Oh, Sorry. it's my turn. Well, I'm way back here. <laughs> and Zoe will be next. There's really nowhere I can go without... I really have no vantage point. Everybody's in my way. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can kind of squeeze through and, and shoot at him. Yeah, that's <laughs> all I really can do is mm -hmm. just shoot him. <laughs> You kind of wait for an opening during your turn and, and uh, shoot at him. Okay, yeah. uh, roll the hit. What, what Are you using like Eldritch Blast or your gun? Yeah, I'm going to use Eldritch Blast. Okay. Roll the 20. Yeah, uh, natural 20? Yeah. All right, so yeah, roll your damage and then double it. Because that's a critical hit. So, it, oh, it's... Okay, so it's 10 and 10, so 20? Yeah, that, that's how we do it. I mean, we can... In this oh. game, anyway. So 20 okay. damage. Sweet. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Yeah, you uh, you blew his arm off. He's oh. just sitting there. He, he kind of looks up and, and hisses at you. He's still not dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> he wishes he was. He's, he's undead. <laughs> okay, Zoe. <clears throat> okay, now when Tressa got bit, did she get poisoned? Uh, the the, uh, the the bite marks are kind of pulsing, and uh, that's as far as you can see on it. Okay, because I she's have... looking a little sick. Okay, because I have lesser restoration, and it says you touch a creature and uh, and can end either one disease or one condition afflicting it. The condition could be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Okay, so let me move over here. All right, I'm gonna touch her and do this thingy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cast that. That's gonna be it for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, when you when you cast Lesser Restoration, uh, the bite marks on her um, 
the swelling and the pulsing stop, and it just turns into a couple of normal looking puncture wounds. And what that that had taken away uh, her some of her maximum hit points, so that's back to normal. All right. And Musette. Sorry, I keep on forgetting to unmute. Okay, um, I'm incredibly distracted now because uh, is there a reason why you recommended that I attack Willem? No, I, I wasn't recommending. It just it was a weird thing with all the all the critical failures that if you decided to attack Willem, he's vulnerable and he'll you, you can reroll all your ones and twos on damage. It was just from the critical failure chart. You don't have to do that. I, I mean, it's it's uh, sounds like it would be a risky thing to try. Well, I just don't want to piss off um, Majira. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it probably she would. Seems like, yeah, she probably wouldn't <laughs> like that. Um, okay, now uh, can can I shoot? I can shoot past the uh, our people here, right? To get to shoot to to uh, shoot Gregorius. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I will just shoot Gregorius again. Okay. And hopefully, actually, not fail. Or yeah, roll to hit. Oh God damn it! I got a two. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Whatever your bonus is, that still probably misses. Well, that's, okay. Yeah, it would uh, be a seven total. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. That definitely misses. And Tressa is going to hit him again with her glaive. She also got a two. So she missed. <clears throat> now it's the vampire spawn. Gregorius' is turn. Uh, How many people does it take to kick a guy while he's down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we suck. <laughs> Attack... Willem. A bite and a uh, claw. Claw missed. And the bite does eight damage. Or eleven. Uh, but he doesn't look sick or anything. I bet that, that effect doesn't work on him. All right. It's Churdovir's turn. I am going to attack him again with my sword. Um... Let me roll for hit. So it's a 14 to hit. Oh, uh, that missed. Yeah, the other guy had uh, was much slower. All right, and now it is Megara's turn. And he has two hits and one miss. 12 damage to him. And he's dead. She slices his head off. Awesome. And his body kind of crumples down on the floor. And his head rolls down in between uh, Megara and Surdovir. I look at the head and I think, do you guys think there's another key? Or should we look inside the head to see if there's another key? Yes. I think it's strange and won't hurt anything. Okay. Jonathan looks hungry too. Ralph, could you use your sickle one more time? Sure. I don't mind. Let me just, let me just walk over there so I don't get blood yeah. on my shoes. Do I need to roll <laughs> something for that? For that Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another dexterity check. So twenty plus your dexterity modifier. Not the saving throw, just the regular. Check. Uh, so fourteen altogether. Okay. Uh, yeah. With the fourteen, it's a little not quite as nice a job as you did last time, but you, you managed to dig the key out of there. Cool. But you I'm not touching it, it this time. Yeah. I'll rinse and repeat. And mage hand it into the lock. Okay, uh, you yeah, um, you manage to to it. You lift it up on your on your mage hand and put it into the lock. And when you turn it, the the gates open. Oh <laughs> crap! Yeah. Uh, at this point, you can decide uh, what what do you do. You want to continue down to the next level, or do you? I know you originally were coming down here because you wanted to look for a place to rest. Well, I'm almost out of magic. I think I've got like one slot total. So yeah, I'm out of magic. 
so I can't make uh, a tiny hut. Through the gates, you see just a little chamber with an altar kind of mirroring what you saw in the very first level upstairs. On uh, closer scrutiny, the altar, you know, what looks like marble is actually made out of cardboard. <laughs> uh, total fraud. Yeah. Um, yeah, when you well, when you order your altar from Wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. so what do you guys think? We do a short rest? Yeah. Uh, a short rest allows you to use your hit dice to heal yourself, but it doesn't get you your slots back unless you're Ralph. Ralph can get his spell slots back, but nobody else could. <clears throat> Well, I think Chodavir can get a like one back. Maybe. With the uh I think what the ability is called. Do I have an ability to heal? I don't remember that. No, yeah, to get well, slots back, wizards can Oh yeah. Okay. Get a limited number on a short rest. Of spell hmm. slots back. Arcane recovery, that's what it's called. Arcane yeah. recovery. Let me see if I have that. No. I have Arcana, uh, Blade Song, King Senses, Divine Ancestries. That's it. Yeah, up to a combined level of three. If you took a long rest, where everybody just kind of hung out for eight hours, you could get all of your hit points and your spell slots back. Oh, wait a second. It says here, Arcane Recovery. At Wizard mm -hmm. Features, it says, once per day when you finish a short rest, you could choose expended spell slots to recover up to a combined level of three and none of the slots can be six level six level or higher so yeah i can uh, take a short rest and get three slots back can you take you a guys short have already you guys have already done a short rest and um so you've probably used some of your hit dice to heal last time <clears throat> do you want to do yeah, a, sh I... a short rest in arcane recovery your hut and then we'll just sleep in there yeah, okay. But but I don't have any spell slots left right now. So I would But have if you to... rest for an hour, you can arm arcane recovery three combined levels. Yeah, I guess it's I can do that. So do I, I don't know the... because like Zoe she she only has one spell slot left. Yeah, I'm saying take a short rest and allow him to recover so he can cast the his hut. Cast and, a, we have a, the tiny and then we'll take a long rest. And then everybody can go inside the, the little bubble and mm -hmm. nothing else can go in it. And we can take a long rest without inside the, worrying okay. about yeah. anything coming in. Okay, so I do have Arcane Recovery here. There's a little square that says uh, square and then slash long rest. But uh, Arcane Recovery, no action. All right, so I can go back and uh, uncover, uh, recover three slots. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> yeah, up to a combined level of three. So like three firsts, one second, one first. Yeah. Or one third. <clears throat> but is the tiny hut, what level is that? Tiny hut is, I'm not sure. I think I got this when I went to level five. How do I see what? Oh, third level. It's a third level. Yeah. Level three. So you could, you could, yeah. So you could just recover that one spell slot. Okay. For the tiny hut. Okay. So let me see. Um, actually, I think I did cast magic missile. That's true. So I can, I have one slot back, and I'm going to cast um, tiny hut. So my sl spell slots are once again busy. <laughs> And I cast a little bubble, and when I do that, um, we all see this kind of bubble form. And it says here, it's a 10-foot radius immobile dome of force and stays a, a, a springs into existence around you and above you and remains stationary for the duration. Nine creatures of medium size or smaller can fit inside the dome with you. So creatures and objects within the dome, when you cast a spell, can move through it freely. All of the creatures and objects are barred from passing through it. Spells and other magical objects can't extend through the dome or be cast through it. The atmosphere inside the space is comfortable and dry regardless of the weather outside. Um, yeah, let's do that. So everybody, come into the bubble, except for, you know, Magira and, and Willem, because 
they don't need to be inside the bubble. They inhabit this place, so. All right, let's everybody move in there. Megara walks up to the uh, to the altar and slashes it, and it just disintegrates, you know, with her sword. And she says, "Come, Willem." And uh, she says, "We'll we'll see you downstairs." And she heads down the steps uh, to the uh, to the next level. What about Tressa? Oh yeah, she's Tressa's coming. going in. Yeah. yeah. All right, and everybody can take a long rest, which is much needed. Yeah. Uh, real fast, can we take like a 15 minute break? Oh, so yeah, of course. That's like a, an actual that's a good like, real time, real yeah. life. Yeah. 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 I need drink and stuff. Yeah, we got to feed our kid too. If you like the character artwork for Jericho Squad, Check out the art of Asya Yordanova. And Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. If you like the intro theme, check out music by composer Ben Warren, who's a good friend of the Clive Barker podcast. In-game music provided by Tabletop Audio. Joe and Catalina come from Little Spark Films, who recently helped with Joe Bob Briggs's The Last Drive-In on Shudder. Check out Catalina Carita's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. She's currently reading Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror which BarkerCast is also revisiting with our audio commentaries. These make great companion pieces together. in that piece of crap cabin where you and your loser dad spend every summer. Don't lie to me. I'm dead. 3386. And as I said, I apologize. Don't you turn your back on me. You're him, aren't you? Why the hell are you even talking to him? You, my boy, are in breach of contract. Highly sought after by the soldier on the go for an induced extended alert. Extra cheese, blue cheese, goat cheese, red peppers, mushrooms, green peppers, spinach. Oh, would you look at that? You accepted a title and a wage to style confections for crazy pizza. Dude, what the hell? They are just olives. Are you outside of your mind? I need you! Even though the ticket specifies... No! The one's been flailing all night long from jubilant excess and joy to... Fiery anger to bone-crushing despair, a mewing child lashing out. It's a story of desolation and domination. Don't knock over the poison. And finally, if you want to support us at the Barker Cast, a great way to do that and show us off is the Barker Cast Tee Public Store. We've got a Jericho Squad crew shirt. We've got uh, Cenobium. We've got uh, Marcus's pinhead design. There's all kinds of great designs, and they're, and they're not just t-shirts either. So please go check it out. Uh, get something and support us. Thanks. 
I was recently asked to help moderate the new Facebook group, Clive Barker Book Club. If you like discussion of Clive's books, you should check it out. Uh, but before your you, before your rest or after the rest, if you guys want to take a few minutes to to talk about what you want to do or plans or what you think, now's a good time. Magara okay. can't hear you through the walls. Oh, yeah. Since Magara can't hear us, what she one hundred percent is going to betray us in some form or fashion Who on the she? next level. <laughs> What did you guys get mixed up in? What, what have I, I been saying? <laughs> yeah, but also she did protect us on the way here. Not me. We already knew that. Well, you know, <laughs> you had the chance to lie and you didn't. <laughs> so. Wanted people who had some sort of faith and some sort of God and the ones who didn't were the heretics. And so it ended up being, you know, Zoe and Tressa, wasn't it? The two yeah. 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 Right. So I don't trust them either. I mean, I think that she's going to try to drag us into hell. And we're really here just to find out why the portal is spawning all these demons. I'm not intending to go into it into hell unless we really have to. So. I mean, I think we figured out why. <laughs> like. Cressa says, then why did you make a deal with her? You let her believe it. that that you that you're going to go into hell with her. Well, I, I think I remember saying that I I was going until the portal. I didn't I don't remember saying that I was interested in going into hell. You guys didn't like sign anything or agree to anything with did you? To my recollection, there were no signatures. <laughs> it was all just a um, good faith agreement, we'll say. Well, I didn't make it. See you suckers later. <laughs> <laughs> have fun I'm in going hell. With the bird. Have fun in hell, sure bitches. We have to, uh, uh, you know, be uh, bound by honor to a creature from the gulfs. I had my fingers crossed. <laughs> okay oh sorry but um before we go down in there i do want to um cast protection from evil and good yeah oh shoot okay it's only one willing creature well i've got that and too that i can do it so we can at least get two of us covered um the mage armor's also expired. Oh yeah, you'll want to do mage armor again. Can okay. I uh put one of those mage armors from you? Uh, can I cast it on someone else? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to cast it twice then, but yes. Okay. okay. I can do that. Absolutely. It seems like this is the last level. Okay. So um Zoe if you cast on two people and I cast on two people and then they have mage armor, that means that every single one of us would be protected, correct? Yeah. Um, one thing about mage armor, though, is it overrides whatever their armor class is before. For So for somebody like Tressa, it actually makes their armor class worse. Right? Because she has actual real armor. Mm -hmm. Well, for Tressa... I was probably going to go ahead and cast um, protection from evil and good on her. Okay. And then I don't think I can cast it on myself, but I could cast it on Zoe and then she could cast it on me. I can only, mine's only by touch and it's one person. Yeah, mine too. So yeah, if you want to use up spell slots, you can cast those things on more than one person. Okay, so what are we doing? Well, I didn't... It sounds like they're going to take somebody to hell. So, like, do we have an expensive soul? They don't want me. Soul? They me. <laughs> do we Big have a... Question. So, they want to take me, uh, Musette, and Ralph, I think, into hell? Yeah. Uh, Tressa and I are the outcasts because we didn't lie. 
Well, then maybe uh, should be and I should go in first. Well, no, I got an idea. So I assume this stairway doesn't lead to hell, right? We're not going directly there. No, we have one more level. I think it's going to be at the end of the level. Uh, I, I assume that this portal is set at the deepest, profound reaches of this uh, inferno. Um, maybe we can find out without having to go into hell? Or can maybe... you turn invisible, Chodavir? Can I turn invisible? No. Do you have invisibility? No, I don't think so. Let me check. I think you could turn him invisible, though. I could, but, well, yeah. It's a matter of timing. If there's a lag... Yeah, yeah, and and also uh, a, f- a few minutes, or well, b- yesterday I guess it would be. You know, um, Magira looked directly at you while you were invisible. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I was thinking uh, post everything when she wants to take somebody to hell, you turn invisible, and I made your illusion an illusion of you that goes with her, and then we skedaddle. And I can uh, cast invisibility too. Okay, so if we could time it so you make him invisible right when I'm casting the illusion and I can do it subtly. Um, maybe we can send a fake show to her to hell instead and that'll buy us enough time to get out of here before she realizes it. Okay. So, Tressa, uh, do you have any idea what that portal is about? Do you have any idea whether or not we'll be able to close it from from this world or do you think we'll have to go into hell to take care of the source of the portal do you have any idea about that she says i i never made it that far honestly um the only one who did the only ones who did are um your friend bentley uh went there with cassius briar Does anybody have a picture of a Polaroid of Bentley that we could ask him some th- some stuff? Um, I feel like Bentley you, was so long ago. <laughs> you, you guys, um, Musette has a cell phone with photos on it. It's not like Polaroids, but... <laughs> just... That works. Oh, the irony. We can try to contact him through the, uh, <laughs> the mind phone thing. <laughs> oh, contact Bentley? Well, I mean, yeah. maybe she gets signal down here. <laughs> I was asking, gonna ask that. Yeah. Does it work? I just need to look at the picture, I guess. <laughs> okay. Pulls out phone. Hopefully, yeah. you took a yeah. picture of Bentley That's making like, pancakes. Hands phone. Right. <laughs> yeah, Man, you wanna, you're pancakes. gonna contact Bentley. <laughs> yes. Okay, I have handed Chudavir the phone. Okay. Thank you. Is there a picture of Bentley in here? Yeah, I pulled it up, dude. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Little furry guy. Okay, so I'm going to go like, Bentley, Bentley, can you hear me? Bentley. Oh, hey, hey, are are you guys okay? Bentley, we are we are okay. Um, Bentley, come hard... save us. Should have here screwed us over and got us lost. You can't hear him. You only hear yeah, yeah. Chertovir talking to him. Yeah, I, I hear him in my mind. Um, I say, yes, we're all okay. We're with Tressa. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, we're going to make it into the ninth level of this uh, Gregorious Hell. And I'm assuming at the end of that will be the portal to Hell. And um, so I'm wondering, Bentley, do you know anything about this portal? Do you know any way that we can maybe try to close it or where it's emanating from? You were here with the... Um, Cassius, right? Yeah, guy. Yeah, um, Cassius told me to wait upstairs. Oh, okay. So you never saw anything that he did? No. He he said he took care of the portal, and then we left. Hmm. So that's strange, because I, I think there are still creatures emanating from the gulfs. Um... Okay, well, Bentley, if that's all you know, um, I don't think Cassius would tell us anything. Do you want me to ask him? No. No, I don't, uh, I don't need you to tell him that we're here. Um, 
Okay. Well, thank you, Bentley. Um, I'll keep you posted. Okay. All right. I stay safe. Okay. Thank you, Bentley. So, guys, Bentley said that when he was here with Cassius, uh, the Cassius told him to wait upstairs, and then he said he was going to take care of the portal, which I don't think he did. Um, and then that's all he knew. He never actually saw what Cassius did. And I don't really trust Cassius. I mean, he's he's my brother's political opponent, and you know, he's, I think he's involved in trying to kidnap my brother. And I I honestly don't trust them that much. Um, no, Cassius is totally part of a group of people trying to destabilize this yeah. whole organization. The Aboriginal children. Thank you. So it was the Aboriginal children. So. I guess we're just gonna have to go in there and, and take a look at the the portal and see what we can come up with. What do you guys think? Well, I was going down there anyway. Yeah, I guess it's either go downstairs or turn back. Um, okay, I I guess we're doing this. All right. <clears throat> As you head down the stairs, uh, you see. Magera sitting at the bottom of the steps. Uh, there's a doorway going into the uh, the ninth area, but for some reason she hasn't gone through it. Are you guys and still need to do that spell? Oh, you just. I think out. we're just moving. Okay, so we will get to it when we get to it. I guess. Okay. So uh, Magera says, "Can you please remove?" The, there's a sigil uh, above the door. She says, can you please remove that? Why? Sigils are usually there to keep something in or keep something out. You're not supposed to move them. Exactly. It's definitely there for a reason. That's keeping me and my, that's keeping myself and Gaustus apart. Who's Gaustus? I, Gaustus is is my my husband. He's inside. And this is the first you've mentioned this? I mentioned that I needed you to help me get in. It's not technically a lie. Magira, how about Does anyone oh. How about we go in there first to see if Gaustus is there and then we can come back and let you know. I think that you're going to have trouble getting through there as well, all of you except for um, except for Tressa and Zoe. Hmm. So what happens? Unless you I, remove that. So what happens to me if I try to cross the door? Uh, are you going to try? I'm asking. Uh, Oh, you're asking Magera. Okay. Magera, because yeah, yeah. she probably knows what's going to happen to her. She says, uh, it hurts. It hurts and it stops you. I try putting my hand to the door. Okay. Uh, make a constitution saving throw. Or actually wisdom, sorry. Make a wisdom saving throw. And I'm assuming that that constitution thing from uh, the plus three from my blade song is gone now? Yes. I have a 14 save total. You feel sort of a wall of force that stops you from getting through, uh, but it doesn't uh, It doesn't hurt. Yeah, I, I can feel it. I, I don't think I'm, I'm going to be able to cross this. Um, he says if you just... Rem I can't touch it. Infernal creatures like myself can't touch it, but if you can remove that sigil up above the door, this will all go away. Um, I know that it's not wise ever I, yeah, to split I, I up, like but uh, it's, it seems like Zoe and uh, Tressa and possibly uh, Jonathan Livingston can go through. Is that an option? While we stay here. How I'm, big is, how big Chris is this? Says, I, I'm willing to go if that's what you want me to do. I'll do anything. I'm going to poke my beak through. 
Is this a door okay. that we can see through if someone opens it? So, uh, Jonathan, make a, a wisdom saving throw. Eight. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you take three psychic damage and you're stuck at the door. So I guess that answers that question. Door. Something Cressa says, through. "Do you do you want me to try? I'll go through." Okay, but be careful. Okay, so she sort of hesitant hesitantly uh, puts her hand in and doesn't do anything, and then she uh, walks through, and she's uh, she's through the door, and you can't see her anymore. So we can't see through the door when it's open. Right, but that's also yeah. why I recommended that Tressa and Zoe go together. Oh. Tressa just went off on her own. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and me. Don't forget you recommended me. But that I'm didn't work. That I'm actually truly sorry about that. <laughs> this is, it, like, wait, wait. If, if Zoe goes through, there'll be no one out here to remove the sigil. And oh, we'll all be stuck out here. Okay, so I Why didn't you a... say that earlier? He did. I, well, I I did. I, I said you. I I asked you to remove that. You did. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Fine. I guess I'm removing the sigil because I have completely messed this up. Uh, okay. Uh, what do I gotta yeah, do? And, um. It 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 looks like a. It's it's kind of a a stone disc up above the door. It looks like you you could probably pry it off. So I was assuming that Tressa was going to see what was on the other side and that she would come back, but I guess she doesn't come back. Uh, she hasn't yet. Well, okay. she did tell us about a husband that she never mentioned before. Tressa is kind of hot headed. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that she's okay. She's probably okay. Not. Um, so do you do you pry it off? You, you okay. could use your dagger or something. Yeah, I was just making sure that I had a dagger. I do have a dagger. Okay. I'm okay. pry it off. Okay, uh, and it's easy enough. You you pry off the 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 disc and it falls down on the floor, and the sort of hazy mist that it was in the doorway disappears. And what you see inside the door is kind of is an ice cavern, and everybody here has a a, a feeling of deja vu. You've seen this before. I do remember that dream. So I, I think I recognize the ice cave from my dream. And I'm like, you guys, I, do you remember this place? And Megara and Willem run through. Um, they go past everybody and go inside. Well, I cross the threshold. Okay. Is everyone else going in? Yep. All right. Now, am I staying here because of the sigil or am I going in too? You took the sigil down. Yeah, the sigil's off. Okay. Guys, do you remember this place? Oh, yeah. Yep. I know some of us. So inside, uh, you see an ice cavern. Uh, you see the portal, uh, which has kind of remnants of the, the eyeball that you saw before. Um, and you see an active portal. You see uh, an insectoid-looking skeletal creature with a scorpion tail. Uh, it's missing an arm and it looks around like it looks look sometimes it's looking at you but it seems like it can't see you and it says who's there who's there and uh, Megara says I'm here I'm here husband and uh, Willem runs up uh, to be next to her and he says Megara I smell the second dominion <laughs> Is he here? She says it's not it's not uh Cassius Briar. If he's here, I will kill him. Okay. Um, I guess I will say I am Chudovir. I uh I come in peace. Um can you tell us who you are and what place is this? I'm Gaustus. I was trapped here by someone from your dominion. He took he took my arm and blinded me and left me here. I'm assuming that was Cassius Briar. 
Yes. Well, I don't like Do you him. know him? Can you bring him here to me? I am also trying to find out what he's up to. He's got some plans that I don't like. And he tried to, I think he's involved in trying to kidnap my brother. Um, they had a Nolianak. What, what do you know about the Aboriginal children? I know nothing. Gustus, where does the portal lead to? Portal leads from hell to here. Do you know of a way that we can close the portal? I would ask you to correct the portal so that we can go home. Okay. Um, do you have a clue as to how we can fix the portal? Aren't you a wizard? And you, when you look at it, you understand kind of the arrangement of the tiles around the outside affects the way that the portal is aimed. Uh, so if you make an Arcana check, you could probably figure out how to manipulate the portal and how to make it do, you know, what you want it to do. Okay, so I'm going to do an Arcana check. 16. Okay, yeah, uh, with a 16, you see how this is arranged, and it looks like it was kind of hastily done, that somebody made this portal, uh, and they they sort of rearranged it in a way that it would make it so that demons could come through and then they're trapped here uh, and they can't go back. And you figure it probably was Cassius who did it. Where are the tiles? Are the tiles uh, the square pieces in the center of the portal? It's sort of the outside sandy looking part. Oh, I see. Yeah. What kind of investigation can I do to figure this out? Well, you you know, yeah. I mean, you know how to uh, how to reverse it so that it can go two ways. I kneel down and I move the tiles around, and I put it in the correct configuration. He says, "Is it done?" And Megara says, "Yes, I think he's completed it." And she walks over and she says, "Now, the rules of hell say that we cannot go alone." And you've agreed to come with us, except for Zoe and Tressa. So come along. I didn't agree to anything. I forgot you could talk. <laughs> Damn it, I should have stayed silent. <laughs> Sometimes the rest of us wish we could. <laughs> so about that, um, hey, can we have a counter proposal? So, Gustus, how would you like me to bring Cassius up to this place? And then you could take Cassius with you to hell. That would uh, that would be satisfactory to me, but uh, Megara needs to bring someone also. Um, I'm sure we can arrange Again, something. So not to be that guy, but why don't we just go grab two schmucks off the street and drag them down here? Because we're Jericho squad. We don't do that. Um, I'm sure there'll be... A, Maybe uh, you don't do that. <laughs> well, I'm assuming um, Cassius has a bunch of people that hang out with him. Yeah. yeah um, so any so of those assholes would work. Maybe even the Nullianak. Um, make, a, make a persuasion check. Okay, persuasion check. Let's do that. Persuasion. Ooh, I'm not very persuasive. Um, okay, so I rolled a 15 plus minus 1, so it's 14 persuasion. No, 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 don't okay. listen to him. It's a much better deal than he's describing it. Um, and I want to pitch it. Okay, uh, let me... You got a 14 persuasion. It's 15 minus 1. I have minus 1 persuasion, apparently. I rolled a 15 as well. Okay, so I got a um, 20. he says, I'm, I'm convinced, but who are you going to bring? Cassius at all, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure Cassius isn't doing this just by himself. He has other accomplices. He says, well, the no, no offense. I mean, Megara, do you think that this lot could handle Cassius? And she says, I mean, look what he did to me. And she says, yes, I have my doubts. And I think that if we let them go, they'll never come back. Oh, Trust me, I want to see Cassius get his just desserts. I mean, I, I will do everything in my power. He wanted to kill my brother. I don't think that's enough. 
we have you right now. We have the promise of someone else at some unspecified point in the future. Well, how about you guys come with us and just take the next two people we tangle with? You want to bring us to your world? We're not still here. <laughs> She's talking about the second dominion. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, but that's not my world. Anyway, so yeah, that I'm a solid fit. Would, that would be complicated. Uh, we'd have to go through the Inovo. Chris yeah, says, "There's got to be somebody here in the fifth. We can just. It doesn't need to be in the fifth anymore." Can I consult with my other team uh, about something real quick? Yeah, she she says, "Well, we've waited this long, and uh, they move over to the side out of earshot." I mean, you guys, we are in North Africa. I'm sure there's people looking to get rid of political prisoners. We could just go grab yeah, some. But Jonathan, we don't do that <laughs> kind of stuff. We, we try to help people. We don't just grab them, random people off the, the street. We could grab, that's what I'm help. saying. We could grab bad He's, people. Yeah, he said political prisoners. He wasn't saying not, just anyone. Not anymore. random people. We could go find prison, like somebody bad. Um, it depends. I mean, you know, my brother was a political prisoner. He wasn't necessarily Yeah, that's probably not the best term. Um, Ressa says, uh, as, as horrifying as that idea sounds, <laughs> what, what about those two uh, that we just took the keys out of their brains? The the architect and the, and the builder? Will they take two corpses to go back? We can ask them, I guess. Uh, I think life and death are uh, a little mutable Word, yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, I, my plan was to actually say that we would take them to Second Dominion and try to, you know, drop them in the Inovo mm -hmm. and let them fend for themselves, but uh, that would require oh, us. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, let me. I guess I'll ask them if they can take. The two Gregorius and well, I don't know their names, but the two corpses outside. Well, well, no, no, don't don't mention corpses. We can pop back and fix them up real quick, right? <laughs> I think that uh, the sickle made quite a mess of things. Um, I can make it look better. You can. You don't even have thumbs. <laughs> uh, mm. Jonathan Livingston and all the king's men couldn't put Gregorius's head back together again, but. Well, we don't need to put the head back together. We can make it look like it's back together. Oh, right. You can make it look like it. Yeah. You can make it even look like they're animated, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think? Should we propose that to them? Just don't tell and them. And I've got a plus five corpses. deception, so. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Well, they were there. They fought against them, so they destroyed they're them. They're going to try to take us by force anyway, so we might as well try something. Okay. Okay. So, uh, all right. Let's let's let them know if they can take those two people because there are two of them and there's two people outside. Maybe that'll work. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Okay. So, um, hey, uh, uh, Magira. How about I do it? How about I do it? Okay. <laughs> persuasion than I. <laughs> Mister minus one persuasion. Look at this. Who's got here. the highest persuasion? <laughs> Mine is minus one, so I'm, I'm too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get a plus five. Out of here. <laughs> okay. I spend like, I my days close. reading books in my library, so my social Fast skills. Fast talking are seagull from the docks. Uh, <laughs> hello, so, bird. So, uh, bird. Hello, old bat. Um, so I think uh, we've got. We've got two people for you. I, I just gotta go uh, round them up real quick and we'll bring them on down. How does that sound? What, two people? Oh, you know, the the architect and the designer, Gorio and Leonardo. They're fine, they're fine, trust me. I looked at them. Um, they weren't really using their brains anyway, so getting the key out didn't, didn't harm them at all. I'll, I'll just go. Leave them down well, here real quick, and uh, you can be on your merry way. Make a persuasion check. 
16. Okay. That was, that's probably not gonna do it, you guys. And Gauss just looks at her and, and uh, kind of shrugs his shoulders and says, why not? <laughs> and uh, Magera, <laughs> oh, oh wait, is that a 10? Okay. Now, uh, yeah, uh, she says, I, honestly, I think that we could uh, put them back together and, and reconstitute them. But what about Willem? What about Willem? He needs someone to take back with him also. How? How? Jeez, please, guys. You couldn't Willem, have just told us all of us? that at one time? Uh, I did. You all, you know, you all did agree to come. Well, not all, but most of you agreed to come with us. And now, now that we're here, we're, I, I'm finding out that uh, you, that you're, you're trying to find other people to take your places. I think this is a pretty good deal if only one of you comes. Well, uh, why doesn't Willem stay here with us? I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to like the guy. I mean, I don't mind Willem. This is a great place for him to spin his web and start a family. I mean... Yeah. Uh, but this brings an interesting point. So if you could reconstitute the people outside, there's a whole bunch of other people that fell to this place. So could we just offer one of those to you? Le who did you have in mind? I mean, there's the Oichiug. There's the trash monster. Yeah, that, I mean, there's... That, cr that creature is from hell. Hmm. I suppose Imp Boy won't, wouldn't... Uh... I, I hold have up a his tail. horn from an imp. I guess that's also a creature from hell, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. And well, frankly, there's... I don't know how much you enjoyed his company, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I do that one? Well, there's, a, there's some... I look at Tressa and I go like, there are some fallen Jericho team members we could put them back oh, yeah. together. Her, 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 her face be. looks totally pale, and she says, you cannot. You cannot. Never mind. So, sure, you did agree to go. How about you help me come reconstitute these, um... Oh, uh, Chilvere, you said, come upstairs with me, and we'll okay. grab Leonardo, and... Okay. We can, and we can do that. And we'll I also we'll right talk back. To you. Yeah, okay. All right, so we leave uh, to go upstairs. Did they follow us? No, they're staying down here. Okay, so as we go up the stairs through the door, I ask uh, Jonathan, can you make an illusion of a third person? I said, why do we need to do that? I'll just make an illusion of you up here and take Gregorio and Leonardo back down and send them on their merry way. Hmm. So you would you would say that I would be offering myself and they would see an illusion of me walking the portal with them? Yeah, let me try to stick by Willem. Because uh, so, it's not going to work, right? Because you're not real. Uh, so they're not going to go through. But as long as the other two go through first, you yeah. can switch the direction of the... Well, the portal only goes one way, right? I hear that. And she did say if we reconstitute them that that mm -hmm. could work so they might actually go through the portal and then and Willem so then will just get it. stuck on it or hurt and we can finish him off okay <laughs> sure okay i'm in let's do that uh, did, did you want to go up with with uh with jonathan and and um and uh, Cherdovir? okay so to recap me musette and brand uh jonathan went upstairs and jonathan is proposing that we take down the two corpses and make an illusion of one of us to go through the portal with them? Is that what you said, Brand? That's why I'm used to come up if you can make me invisible, which we talked about while camping. Oh, yeah. Sorry and and also she said she could con reconstitute them. She didn't say that she's expecting you guys to figure out how to put their souls back in their bodies. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I grab a body. I'm like, I'm in. Let's see what we can do. If the two of them well, you get you can't through, go back downstairs. Well, but how are they going to go through the portal without actually someone to take with them? That's not going to work. They're not going to go through the portal. 
Yeah. But they're going to have to reconstitute these two. Yeah, but are you going to take them through the door? No, I, I just kind of assumed we tied you up here, and you were visible. You run into the back room, and just they come up and reconstitute them next to the illusion of you. And then they take all three of y'all. And then all three of us go. Or yeah, all three of y'all start going. And I'll just make sure the illusion hangs back with the bone. Okay, let's let's try that. I hope Magira can't see through the illusion, but yeah, okay. Well, yeah, if she could, we're screwed anyway. I mean, it's, it's highly likely, but I'll do the best but, I can. So um, I need to cast invisibility on Trotovir now? Yes. Oh, oh from upstairs? No, you didn't go. Did you go? You did go upstairs. Okay. Yeah. I'm with that. Okay. And so you're casting invisibility on Chertovir? Yeah. I just cast invisibility on Chertovir. Concentration, okay. and it is up to one hour. Okay. All right. And I will so major Chertovir image. is invisible. I use it's the wand of major image to major image uh, of Chertovir. Okay, and that's coming back down the stairs with you? Or it will. I, um, yeah. Okay. So do you, do you, do the three of you come back down then? Well, I mean, the, the image of Chertovir, or is he coming also? Uh, so, uh, works. the illusionary Chertovir comes down the stairs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Jonathan. Yes. Okay, and she looks at the at the uh, Chertovir, and and she looks at you, and she says, "Where are the bodies?" He's that's up there, ready to help you, assist you. She can sing you a barley song to, if you ask nicely, to help you out with the reconstitution. We thought that was the least we could do, um, and I'll have the illusion of Chertovir and say yes. Yes, in the uh, interests of helping my friends, I've decided to honor my bargain, and uh, I will stay down here with Willem while you go reconstitute the others and prepare myself for my descent into hell. Make a deception check. 23, 22. Okay. Um, she looks at you and looks at Chertovir, and she says... I don't know why you're doing this. That's not Chertovir, that's an illusion. Well, we can't uh, blame us for trying. I can. Uh, you have insulted me. I'm not the one that broke the bar. You're endangering our my whole mission. Say, I have no quarrel with you. I guess I'll take my leave. And just slip on She says, you, you do now. And uh, and she pulls out her bow and aims it at you. Don't you don't don't you go anywhere. Well. So do you do, you do you go up the stairs anyway? I'm gonna turn. Well, anybody got any plans? Well, I mean, what's down in the hole? <laughs> hole go leads to out. the gulfs. You can go find out. Well. Since I have this cloak on and it looks like there's two of me, do I count as two people? Well, no, it actually doesn't look like it's two of you. It looks like you're like five feet, you're a few feet to the left of where you're, or to the side of where you actually are. No. So no. it makes it hard to hit you. Some of us sound like we actually have to go. So. I guess I nominate me. <laughs> And with my hand on my back, that counts as two people or two entities, no? She says, "We, you, you still have the bodies upstairs unless that's part of your trick. Why didn't you bring those down? Well, I was no part of that. I, does it look like I can carry a body? Chertovir I mean, went upstairs with you and Musette. Then they're still upstairs. So why didn't they bring the bodies down? They're waiting on orders, obviously. Uh, I'll go ask it. Hold on. <laughs> no, you'll stay here. She's still pointing the bow at her bow at you. All right, all right, all right, all right. Ralph will go. I'll go. I'll go, and I'll tell <laughs> Musette and Chodavir to bring people down here. Okay. 
<laughs> Calm down. <laughs> she's still pointing her bow at uh, Jonathan. It's cool. And she's side eyeing Ralph, but she's letting you go. Hey, Jodavir Muset, can you hear me? No, I have to go upstairs, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go upstairs and I'll be back and give me. Give me like four minutes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I swear I'll be back. Okay, I'll come back now. <laughs> no, are you gonna? Gaustus, is he gonna Gaustus update? Says, oh, if we, huh? Gaustus says if we kill them, we could take them all. And she says, I know. So, uh, Shodavir and Muset. How's it working out? Uh, it, Our fabulous plan. I'm yeah. sure there were no snags. No, no, there's no <laughs> snags. Other than you two not bringing bodies. Ah, uh, fine. So, move. All right, I'm out of time. Okay. So, uh, I would pick up the uh, less heavy body. Or just drag it behind me. Okay. Yeah, that's so, probably Gregorius. The, the 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 architect Leopardo is is heavier. Okay, so I'm gonna grab uh, Gregorius, get hey, buddy, and take him. Uh, Chertivir. Okay, so I'm following Ralph down the stairs, and I'm taking Leopardi with me. And, okay. Uh, I I kind of come down carrying the body or tracking the body, and I give a side eye to like, let Jonathan. I'm like, I knew this was gonna happen. I was like, here, here are the body. Here are the bodies. Here are You're the still corpses. invisible. Oh, that's not right. to not not yeah. So yeah. If, oh, sorry. I should have mentioned. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it. Drop no. the invisibility. And, yeah, I mean, Magera could I mean, already been found was out. watching. Could could see you even if you're invisible anyway. Right. Yeah. She was yeah but I was testing that. Okay. <laughs> but, but now we know confirmed. for a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Before I try to use that to escape. <laughs> Do I have to wait for the whole hour before I become visible again? No, oh, it's she a concentration it. spell. I just yeah. drop it. Okay. All right. So everybody sees us bring the bodies, and, yeah. you know, here they are. Or it's, like, floating, and then... Two of them. We so, only need one more. So uh, there's two, Magera. Yes. I would have, and, and you volunteered to be the third? Uh, Actually, if... there are a lot of corpses strewn about this place. Can we bring one of those to you? For Willem, he says, "We can take corpses with souls. Uh, souls. We can take, yeah. So if it's an undead thing, something from hell already, uh, we can't. It's if you killed it, yeah. it's already back in hell." And it, it, okay, so I'm I'm talking I'm about not the bodies remembering of anything all those that people that we saw floating in in lakes and stuff. I mean, we could grab one of the fresher ones and bring it over here. <laughs> You, Cressa, you go and make that Cressa, track. <laughs> Cressa look turns back to you and she says, "Those were my friends." Well, they weren't all your friends. There was a lot well, of corpses out there. They weren't all they Jericho, were, were they? Friend, wouldn't they want to help you now in your time of need? And they were also some of them. Yeah, there were two squads that failed on this on this uh, trip, and uh, one of them was, or actually. Yeah, one of them was a, a Musette's squad too, uh, and the other the other was uh, the squad from from this area. I thought we saw dozens of bodies floating in a river or a, a lake or something, right? Uh, the, yeah, yeah there. Probably. Some of them were some of them were pretty old, uh, probably killed by Gregorius or whatever. Hmm. So those wouldn't work. Yeah, does it? Uh, you don't know. Okay. Are, are you asking Magera? Yeah. Yeah, I'm asking Magera. How how fresh do they have to be as long as they're human? They have. They have to have died within the the past day or so. So. Does it seem like there's any talking that. Yeah, it sounds like one of us has to volunteer to go. So Ralph, are you going or am I going? Sounds like I'm going. I will be tribute on Ralph. Hang on. So hear me out. How about if Willem stays behind 
until we can bring Cassius so he could take Cassius back to you in hell. Would that be acceptable? That way he can cross through the portal with Cassius and everybody's happy, you know, and you ha you get Cassius for um, Gostas to have his revenge. You make a persuasion check. Persuasion check. Ah. Yeah. I help. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you say to help? Yeah, yeah, that seems like a reasonable plan. We get to, Willem gets to travel the Fifth Dominion. And I'll okay, so you, you get to roll eateries. twice. Can I you cast a roll, cantrip? You can roll twice and take the higher number, which is oh, good because you just got a one. Wait. Oh, sorry. Before before we get into that, can I uh, go ahead and cast Bardic Inspiration? Yeah. That's a bonus action, I think. Is that going to help me with my roll? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm uh, okay, so I need... Yeah, I'm going to focus on Shredevere, and it says uh, you gain an inspiration die, 1d8. And then you can add it to one ability check, attack roll, or saving roll. 1d8. So you get an extra d8. Yeah, okay. and you can roll with advantage because uh, uh, because Jonathan's helping you try to convince them. Cool. Okay. So, so you did I one roll already, and it was a one. Yeah. And you don't want to bother to add to that one. Right. Once so Musette's playing you a song to inspire you from okay. her lyre. So I'm going to click <laughs> on the persuasion through d and I'm your hype bird. I want to give him my talisman. A four. That's and then roll a d8 to that. Seven. So I got 11. Okay. Yeah, still not great. Um, she looks at you... And she puts her hand on, on Gaustus's arm and she says, I don't think that we can trust them. They've already just tried to fool us once. You have to trust us. You can trust Willow. How do you mean? <laughs> well, he, he would be coming with us to help capture Cassius. And so at any time, it's, he can turn on us or, you know, He's got the plenty of opportunities to take a soul, if you would like, before the mission has ended. And so it would kind of be up to him and his choice. Or her Willem choice, or whatever it is. Willem is a, is a loyal friend, but Willem can't take Cassius Pryor. Why not? All of you put together the rest couldn't of us. take him. What'd you say? All of you put together would have a very hard time getting, uh, capturing him. Capturing Cassius? Yes. Look I what he did, he... uh, to, to my Gaustus. So I want to, I want to look at Willem and say, Willem, we talk about you. Everybody here is talking about you like you're not there. Would you like <laughs> to stay with us and we will allow you to take the fur, you know, whoever we may come across in our troubles. And uh, I can really show you a good time here on the 5th. Trust me, you don't want to go back to hell quite yet. He just looks at Megara. Yeah, I mean, we fight enemies all the time. So maybe it doesn't have to be Cassius. Maybe it could be the next cultist that we fight with uh, that he could take along with him. Yeah, and we'd be, you know, maybe if you needed a favor done here on the 5th, could accomplish that for you at the same time. Yeah, at this point, Gaustus speaks up. He says, it's Cassius, or we're taking one of you right now. And uh, Megara says, all right. And uh, she she pulls out um, a, a, a parchment, kind of a materializes in her hand. Uh, and she says, who will sign the contract? Yeah. Uh, well, uh. I guess I guess I will sign the contract. That we're getting Cassius? Yeah, because he's my en my brother's enemy. I mean. So, well, just making sure if we fail in getting Cassius, it's you, Shodavir. It's, it's my head, yes. Okay. Everyone have, hears that. I have faith that with the help of Jericho Squad and my brother and my contacts in the second, and, you know, 
I, I believe that we'll be able to, with with other friends we meet along the way, I believe we'll be able to to ultimately uh, get to Cassius. So I, I, I have confidence about that. I will sign my name. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm All just right. like really uh, you, surprised. You, you sign your name on the uh, on the contract, and she says, "Bring him here. Uh, send him through the portal, and we'll be waiting." Okay. Um, so and so Willem and uh, Willem, us? she says, "Willem, you you go with them." And uh, it looks at her, and he, and she says, "You must." And uh, and so they take um, they. She sort of puts the pieces of the heads back together, like Hellraiser. You know, and and uh, and reanimates those corpses and uh, and pushes them through. And she says, "Let's wait on the other side, Gaustus." And they they go through the portal. All right now, everybody start yamming, yeah, start hitting on Willem. <laughs> no, no, no. Now we got a Willem. <laughs> got a Willem. Yeah, nice and I sign my just name. Sign. So I if you just it's... signed something that's putting you immediately in danger. Yeah. I mean, you and Willem are kind of tied right now, tied yeah. together. Well, Willem's so going to be my friend. Okay. No, Willem's going to be my friend. No, he's my <laughs> friend. No. <laughs> he's a dear friend. <laughs> oh, my dice all fell on the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, they've they've gone through the portal. The portal now goes both ways. It goes uh, so things can come out and things can go in. Uh, your mission here was supposed to be to stop things from coming back out again. You could remove so- a stone or something from the uh, the portal to make it so it's inactive at this point. So and then fix it when you come back. Yeah. How do we take a stone out? It's they're just tiles. They're they're uh, tiles with with uh, runes on them uh, okay, around so the cer- the outer circle. Well, then who wants to do that? So I I look at uh, I look at uh, uh, Jonathan. I give him this sign, and I say, okay, guys, why don't we all go upstairs? And uh, I'm just gonna I, I just need to consider the consequences of what I've done just now, and I'll meet you all upstairs. Just wait, wait. I think you're the only one that can close this portal. Who said that? Tressa. Oh my god, Tressa in her big mouth. Um, <laughs> I, I I know Tressa. I know. Um, <laughs> she says two two of them uh two groups have died trying to get to this portal and close it. Now we're finally here. Well, I can I can it. walk over to Tressa real quick. Let me go ahead and do that. I'll walk over to Tressa. Okay. Till I consult with her. And I, I kind of whisper to her, um, Tressa, I know. Uh, go upstairs, and I'm going to remove one of the tiles to close the portal. But I don't want Willem to see me do it, because I don't know how he's going to react. She kind of looks at you and and says, Can I trust you? You were about to sell out the souls of of my teammates. I wasn't trying to sell the souls of your teammates. I was just, you saw how many corpses are up there? I just thought we could grab one of those corpses. But then she said that it had to be someone who had been killed in the last day or so. So I didn't I didn't offer any, any of your colleagues. When I mentioned corpses, you saw how many corpses we saw up there. It was piles and piles of corpses. They're not all your teammates. So that was my, you know. Didn't Cassius tell Bentley to go wait upstairs while he fixed the portal? Yes, but... And now you're doing the same thing to me? Yes, but I am not Cassius. I don't... I've met Cassius. Do you want to stay down here with me and see me do it? Yes. Okay. So uh, what's the holdup? Um, can you guys just go upstairs real quick? I need to talk something here with Tressa. Sure. But, all right, let's let, let's go. Uh, let's go upstairs. Start looking for our way out. Hey. Okay. Willem, do you know how to take us somewhere? 
Yeah, well, um, can you, we, we came down a big, big tunnel. Can you maybe uh, come upstairs and I'll show you where you can knit us a rope to climb back up? I think you guys have actual <laughs> real ropes. <laughs> Some of you. <laughs> I am well aware. I, have, I can fly. Like, how concerned about to. ropes am I? Yeah. I have wall climb. Well, yeah. well I'll show you. Well, okay. I know that. Yeah, he, he just follows everybody. Okay. I'll just start leading them upstairs. In a way. And wh- whatever you do, you know that whatever you do to this portal, you can put it back again if you need to. Right. So it's not like a major betrayal if it's you're just, just like stopping demons from coming through. Like I'm gonna so. perch on top of Willem when he walks around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I turn to Tressa and I go down on my knees and I fiddle with the stones. Okay. With the tiles. And I remove one of the tiles from the circle and place it in my inventory. Okay. Yeah, and the uh, the the portal goes inert. Um, right now, it's just uh, there's just nothing there. Just the, Tressa, the tiles. I look at Tress and I say, "Are you satisfied? Okay, do you trust me now?" Well, she says, "Let's go." Okay. I was like, "Tressa, here. I want you to hold on to this," and I give her the tile. Okay. We we may talk about this again. I don't know if I'm going to be staying here. Okay. So I move up to join the rest of my crew. Okay. Yeah, she goes uh, up the stairs also. Okay. So I assume All right. we're going to go back to the and camp. It- I want to grab an old one of those old shirts and put it on Willem. <laughs> <laughs> Will Willem kind of shakes his head and and uh, and scratches it off. We'll hold it for later. He might change his what? mind. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there there are so still some you. T-shirts that that uh, there are still some hokey T-shirts there if you want some. I think we should get some. Like my mom went to hell and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't think this would be a good commercial enterprise. Yeah. Well, it obviously didn't didn't work out. Yeah. Okay, is that tent outside our camp? Yes. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, you made it out. Um, Tressa says, honestly, I don't know what's going to happen to this squad now. I mean, there's still a portal here. Theoretically, someone could open it again from this side if they made it all the way down in there and they know what they're doing. Uh, I suppose that we need to reconstitute my squad and keep, uh, keep an eye on it. I don't know if I want that to be me. I'll think about it. So she says, Chertovir, if if I'm going to leave, I'll give this back to you. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, But is she telling me this in front of Willem and he doesn't mind? No, she kind of whispers it to you. Okay, gotcha. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, and this is when everybody's in the, uh, everybody's is uh, in the, in the tent resting. And I want to, yeah, ride Willem around and try to show him the sights of the Fifth Dominion. Okay. I mean, it's a sand dune at this point. Everything <laughs> yeah. novel. I'm just going to yammer at him about the stories. Last time I was here, I ate this, and there's a great, you know, Well, he's from hell, so you're and... not going to be able to get, give him heat stroke. If any yeah, of you I want to I... refill your bullets before you leave, you can do that if you want to rest. Heck yeah. Uh, I said I'd show him around, so I will. If you want to contact Bentley, I'd recommend it. Okay, can, can someone give me the phone with Bentley's picture again? And while they're, they're talking, I'll be sure to keep Willem away from everybody. Okay. We're just going to wander good. around the desert. Okay, so you, we, if, as you concentrate on the... Um, on the picture of Bentley, the, uh, the, uh, the runic, like, phone case, um, activates and uh, and you're able to to speak to him again Bentley are you there ah yes yes is is everyone all right uh I yeah I guess so um there's a few complications but we'll deal with that later um 
Did you close the portal? We did close the portal. We did close the portal, but I have made a deal that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to 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 honor. But uh, but I, I have confidence that our mission will not fail. So uh, uh, if I cannot get Cassius to go through the portal, uh, my soul is forfeit, and I have to go to hell. You're going to ask Cassius to go to hell? Well, you see, when Cassius told you to wait upstairs, Bentley, he didn't really close the portal. I mean, you know that. Well, I knew something went wrong. Yeah, uh, he made it so that the infernal creatures from the gulfs could come through into our world, but then they could not get out. That's kind of the opposite of what he was supposed to do. Are you sure? I am sure. I am. You're sure it sure. wasn't someone else? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> you saw him go into the room. You saw him come out. And so far, none of the Jericho squads could go into that level. So he was the only person who had access to the portal in the meantime. I, th I thought he was my friend, but I guess maybe I was just wishful thinking. I, I, I'm sorry uh, to give you this news. Um, like I said, I, to this point, I still think that he might be involved um, with the kidnapping of my brother. And I, I do want to talk to him in the future. But I don't want you to contact him or tell him anything about this. Okay, Bentley? No, I won't. Are, are you coming back now? Yes, we, we can come back to um, to the Tressa's here. Um, she's going to have to reconstitute the squad. Uh, I don't know if she's going to stay here, if she wants to continue being uh, assigned to this post. But uh, for now, she will stay behind. And, uh, you know, we have to focus on rebuilding this, this uh, outpost. Um, but I'll let you know more when we get there. Okay. All right, over and out. So Tressa um, arranges the tiles on, on the uh, outgoing um, express to send you back to uh, Squad 77 in the Second Dominion. And she says, you're really taking this thing with you? I don't have much of a choice. Uh, you're pretty harmless. Well, I'm better with you than with me, I suppose. I've had my fill of, of uh, demons harassing me here. Oh, he's just a big little fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, says, and I want to, like, preen him a little bit. <laughs> I uh, don't know the consequences if we try to destroy him. So, uh, And I did sign my name, so I guess... Even though I made a deal with the Gulfs that I do, did not intend to honor, uh, my Erythemic culture forces me to try to complete my mission. And my mission is to get to the bottom of what Cassius is up to, and if possible, give him the proper punishment. So I think in a way this kind of meets up with my mission. Well, it certainly seems like you may have bitten off more than you could chew. I wish you all the best luck. I hope that you're able to get through this. That's why I don't do things. Just swallow them. <laughs> Thank you, Tressa. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Can someone take a picture of Tressa, or do we have a picture of her at the Jericho headquarters? Uh, you do have a picture there okay. at the headquarters. Oh. So, do you need anything from us, Tressa? No, no. Um, she goes to Zoe and she says, bless you. If you ever need my help, uh, I don't. We don't. I don't see many of uh, of the sisters. I, in fact, you're the only one I've ever met. Well, hopefully, I won't be the last. Amen to that. Okay. Well, and and, and you all want to go together, holding hands, uh, just from what you remember about uh, how it works. Yeah. Uh, and then and then you can make a charisma saving throw um, with advantage. Okay. To avoid being like forever trapped in the Inovo. Okay, I got 
An eight. Oh, well, you do it with oh, advantage, yeah, yeah, so you take yeah. the higher number. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Usually, you guys have had M Musette do it because she's the one who uh, oh, has the high, okay. the highest charisma. Oh, okay. Well, I got twenty-one total. Okay. Yeah. Um, you you all make it through okay. Uh, Willem kind of uh, crouches down, and and uh, when when you arrive, he kind of crouches down and and hugs all of his legs together like it. He looks like a dead spider. But he just is he's just not feeling good. Uh, but yeah, you made it home safe and you see Bentley there and he says, Oh, I'm so glad you made it okay. All right. Well, thanks. This was fun, you guys. Thank you. Thank it feels you. good to finally get out of there. Yeah, we well, uh, coming up next, we've we've got more Halloween stuff happening. Uh, we're hoping to get back to Ill Clive Barker's Illustrator 2. Uh, we just have to talk to somebody about that. Um, we've got uh, audio commentary for the, the Roger Corman movie, The Raven. Um, yeah. Coming up. That was a lot of fun. We did that with Ed and Nina from Synobium. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> sorry about my cat butt getting in the way. <laughs> is that for Q? Uh, sorry, what? Is that yeah, for it is. Q? It's a yes. Q for Quiet, Quiet Men. Men. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Because you know, I add the videos as the recommended video. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot oh, of fun. awesome! I mean, Thank I, you. I hadn't seen that Roger Corman movie, The Raven, in a long time. It's got Pierre Laurie, Vincent Price, and it also has uh, 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 what's his name? Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff, Frankenstein himself. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that was a lot of fun, and uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying the commentary tracks. Yeah. All right. And this podcast, having no beginning, will have no end. Technical producer Rob Danhauser. Score Imagica Cradle of Chersemet by Ben Warren. Character design Asya Yordanova and Bird Ninja Art. Additional illustration by Richard Kirk, used with permission. You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com. We've got an archive of past episodes, news, features, and reviews, along with all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on every other place you can find podcasts. Share your thoughts with us, and share our podcast with your friends. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that's not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.